My name is Lawrence and I'm a CDL instructor here with Northern Industrial Training. Today we're going to be covering the pre-trip inspection on a Class A commercial vehicle. As you go through and watch this video, please take the time necessary to write down any questions that you may have and consult the resources that you have. In the state of Alaska, the Alaska CDL Manual Section 11 is where you'll find the information pertinent to the pre-trip inspection. So let's go ahead and get started with the inspection and show you how our team can be your advantage. Our pre-trip inspection is going to begin with the in-cab inspection followed by our air brake test. It's important to remember when we get in and out of the cab of the vehicle to maintain three points of contact at all times. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my associated uh, safety bars and step up into the cab of the truck for our interior. We'll go ahead and put on our seat belt and as we do we're inspecting the seat belt to make sure that it is not cut or frayed and that the buckle latches and unlatches if we need it to in case of emergency. We're going to check our mirrors and our windshield. Our side mirrors should be securely mounted and not cracked or broken and adjusted properly for me the driver. Our windshield should be free of any cracks in the driver's vision, any rock chips bigger than about a dime size, which would interfere with the driver's vision, and free of any illegal stickers. The safe start ensures that the vehicle will not move before we intend to do so. We start off with a couple of safety precautions, and one of which is to ensure that the parking brake on the truck is set, and we know that because the, our yellow dash valve is pulled out. We'll make sure that the transmission is in neutral, and we need to slightly dep depress the clutch pedal. And we'll then go ahead and turn the key to the run position, and we're going to look at our lights on our dashboard as it goes through its function check. And as it does, we're seeing that our ABS lights in the dashboard, they illuminate and they go out. And if one were to stay illuminated, it would be an indication that there's a fault in the ABS system. Once those gauges have had a chance to cycle and all of our lights have uh, gone off, we'll go ahead and start the truck. Once the truck starts, I'm going to slowly release my foot from the clutch pedal, ensuring I'm in neutral. And I see that my oil pressure rose to its normal operating range within the first few seconds of engine operation. If it did not do so, I would go ahead and turn the truck back off. Another gauge that we'll inspect is our coolant temperature. And as we continue to drive the truck and after we start it, we'll make sure that this gauge rises to its normal operating range. We don't see any jumping around and there's no warning lights in the gauge itself. In the middle of my panel, I have a digital readout for my voltmeter, which should be between about 12 and 15 volts. We see we're right at 14 volts, so that's just where it needs to be. Primary and secondary air tanks are rising to their normal operating levels between 100 and 125 PSI with no warning lights illuminated. This truck is equipped with diesel exhaust fluid and we have a gauge for that and it should be above one eighth of a tank with no warning lights in the gauge. And it is just as it needs to be. After that, we're going to check our heater and defrost controls and make sure that our heater and defrost or function correctly. So I'll put my hands over the vents and ensure that warm air is coming out of the vents. It will keep our windows free of ice and mist and keep our toes nice and warm. I'm going to check my windshield wipers and washers. So I'm looking at my wiper blades to ensure that they're securely mounted and that they are not cut or torn, no missing blades. My washer fluid functions correctly and my windows uh, have a nice clean path where the wipers 
have wiped it clean. On my gauge stock or my uh, signal stock here, I'll check to make sure that my right turn signal, and these are just the indicators in the dashboard itself, right turn signal, left turn signal function correctly, my four-way flasher indicators function along with my high beam indicator. I'll need my lights on for that. And my high beam indicator functions correctly so that I know that if I have those lights activated that I'll have warning inside the cab of the truck as well. Once we get to this point, we're working our way up the steering wheel and we get to everybody's favorite part and that is we get to blow the horns. Electric horn works and my personal favorite, the air horn functions correctly as well. Once we've gotten to this stage, we're going to begin our brake inspections. And at the first thing I'm going to do is test to make sure that my parking brakes function correctly. So I still have my tractor parking brake set from when I did my safe start. The trailer parking brake is released and we wanna make sure that we inspect these independently. So with the tractor parking brake set, trailer released, I'll place the transmission into first gear and gently release the clutch until I feel the truck start to tug against those park brakes. You'll also see a little lift in the mirrors as that truck torques. We don't wanna try and force anything, but we just wanna make sure that those parking brakes are gonna hold fast. So there's little tug, parking brake hold fast, now I'm going to set a brake and release a brake. So I'm going to set the trailer parking brake by releasing or pulling out the red dash valve and release the tractor parking brake by pushing in our yellow dash valve. And then I will do the same thing by gently releasing the clutch until I feel a little bit of a tug against the trailer brakes. Little tug doesn't pull through the brakes so our parking brakes are functioning correctly now I'll test the service brakes and I'll test the service brakes by moving ahead at approximately five miles per hour and then stepping on the brake pedal our service brake pedal and the truck should come to a safe stop without uh, deviating to the left or right so we released our brakes we'll check our surroundings Approximately five miles per hour, firm brake application, truck stops without pulling to the left or right. I'm gonna go ahead and place the transmission in neutral. This is going to begin our three-step brake test, which will include the applied pressure test, test our low air pressure warning device, and finally ensure that our emergency brakes function correctly by observing that the dash valves pop at the appropriate uh, PSI on our brake app or our tank uh, air tank gauges. So the first thing I want to do is ensure that the truck is built up to its full operating pressure, governed cutout pressure in the air tanks. And we just heard the air compressor unload, that little sneeze that you heard the truck make. And we'll go ahead and we're in neutral, so we need to ensure that we're parked on flat level ground. If not, we would chalk the wheels on the truck. And then we'll turn the engine of the truck off because we can't have the air compressor running, which is engine driven during our brake inspection. We'll turn the key to the run position. And what we're gonna do is apply full brake pressure, and we can see that on our brake application pressure gauge. Once everything's stabilized, so you'll see an initial loss of pressure in the air tank gauges. And once that stabilizes, I'll begin the timer for one minute's time. And what I'm observing is any loss of pressure after that initial application and we cannot see a greater than four PSI loss in 60 seconds for a class A combination vehicle. This is what I typically refer to as the, you know, uncomfortable silence portion of the pre-trip inspection. 
at least if you have another person in here. So observing any loss in those gauges, I'm also listening. If I can hear any audible air leaks, often you'll hear it actually move through the dash valves behind the dashboard. Sometimes you hear it from outside the truck. But I can't hear any air leaks. I also can't see any loss of pressure in the gauges. And that's our one minute. So we've successfully passed the applied pressure test with no loss of pressure greater than four PSI in one minute. The next step is going to be to test that my low air pressure warning applies and it needs to come on at or before 55 PSI. A warning that you can see is required and on this truck we will also have an audible warning. So I'll go ahead and bleed the pressure out of the tanks by stepping on and releasing the brake pedal thereby releasing the air from the tanks. Watching the gauges during the process and I see that well above 55 PSI my low air pressure warning light and buzzer applied properly and my third and final step is to continue uh, releasing the pressure in the air tanks and make sure that my dash valves pop out which indicates that my spring brakes or emergency brakes have applied. That needs to happen between 20 and 45 PSI. So just about 25 to 30 PSI, which is perfectly in range, my dash valves popped out indicating that the emergency brakes properly applied. So we've successfully passed the three-step brake test and we will conduct another safe start and as the truck is rebuilding air pressure we'll conduct an external light operations check. We are going to begin our walk around inspection at the front of the vehicle with what we call the approach. On the approach to the vehicle, we're going to make sure that even as we walk up in the morning or during our day, that the vehicle has not suffered any kind of damage, which would create a defect that we would need to take care of. We'll start the approach at the top and work our way to the bottom. You guys will notice that I have my handy dandy pointing stick with me, and that's because we need to be able to point to, identify, and then fully inspect the items on the pre-trip inspection. So right off on the top, we have our five clearance lights. Make sure that they're securely mounted, there are no cracks, the lenses are clean, and they are the proper color, which is amber. Moving down the front of the truck, we have our headlights, turn signals, and those turn signals also function as uh, four-way flashers, and there are parking lights in there as well. So we have our high and low beam headlights. None of the lenses on any of the lights are cracked. They're clean with no moisture inside. Proper color on the headlights, clear lenses, clear lights, and amber in color for our turn signals, four-way flashers, and park lights. The front bumper is securely mounted. It is level to the ground. If it was not level to the ground, it could indicate a condition of a flat tire or a defect in the suspension or steering systems, which would mean the truck was unsafe to operate. We see ours is level, and underneath the hood of the truck, there are no leaks from the engine compartment, and there are no parts that are unsecured and hanging down. And from here, we'll go ahead and continue our walk around on the passenger side engine compartment for items that are unique to that side of the vehicle. On the passenger side of the vehicle, we will inspect items that are unique on this side of the vehicle. And we're gonna start this inspection with a general overview of the engine compartment area. And what I'm looking at is all of my hoses, any of my connections for my intake, the clamps associated with them, and any wires which may 
connect the different components inside the engine compartment. And what I'm looking for is in any rubber or silicone components that there are no abrasions, bulges or cuts, that there are no leaks coming from any of the hoses, that the clamps are tight and that they are not bent or broken and that any of the wiring that I have in the engine is securely fastened and that there are no exposed wires, damaged insulation, or corrosion on the wires. Once I've done that overview, I will go ahead and mention unique components on this side. On this side of the engine, we have the turbocharger and the exhaust associated with that. And we'll inspect the exhaust system from the manifold where it exits the engine, through the turbocharger, underneath the cab, and eventually to where it exits at the exhaust stack. What I'm checking for is to make sure that there are no leaks, which could cause a hazard by entering the cab and causing the driver to potentially uh, not only experience short-term health consequences, but those could be even be fatal from carbon monoxide poisoning. And what I'm looking for is any black soot, which would indicate an exhaust leak. And I will also check along the entire exhaust system for any missing or loose clamps or any broken pieces of exhaust pipe. As I move forward in the engine compartment, we're going to look at our coolant reservoir. Our coolant reservoir is securely mounted. The cap is on tight. There are no leaks from the coolant reservoir, and I also need to inspect for the proper level. In this scenario, the coolant reservoir is see-through, so I can visually inspect to make sure that the coolant is in between the minimum and full lines, and it is. On this side of the engine, we also have a unique accessory, engine-driven accessory, and that is the water pump. On the front of the water pump, there is a pulley with a belt on it. We need to identify that this is a belt-driven accessory. We also need to inspect that belt to make sure that it has no more than three quarters of an inch of free play, that it is not cut or frayed. The water pump, we need to make sure that it is securely mounted and that there are no leaks from the water pump. From here, we'll go ahead and walk around to the driver's side and continue our engine compartment inspection. On the driver's side of the engine compartment, we'll continue our inspection. We'll start at the front with our belt-driven alternator, and we'll inspect the belt the same as we did for the water pump, ensure that it has no more than three quarters of an inch of play, and that the belt is not cut or frayed. The alternator is securely mounted. The wires that attach to the alternator are tight, with no damaged insulation or exposed wires and there's no corrosion. As we work our way back along the engine, we have our engine oil dipstick and engine oil fill. We will inspect the engine oil level by removing the dipstick, wiping it clean, reinserting, and then removing again, ensuring that the engine oil level is in between the add and full lines, usually on the hash marks that are engraved on the dipstick. At the very back of the engine, we have our engine driven. In this case, it is gear driven, which we need to identify, air compressor and power steering pump. The air compressor and power steering pump are securely mounted with no leaks. We will follow the lines to and from both components to ensure that the fittings are tight that there's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts, and no leaks. And as we follow the power steering fluid hose, we eventually wind up at our power steering fluid reservoir. Our power steering fluid reservoir is securely mounted. The cap is on tight. There are no leaks from the power steering fluid reservoir. And this is another reservoir which we can visually inspect the see-through container to ensure that the fluid is between the add and full lines. 
will follow that hose from the power steering fluid reservoir to the power steering gearbox, the power steering gearbox and the hoses going to and from have no abrasions, bulges, cuts or leaks. The clamps are tight, the fittings are tight, the power steering gearbox is securely mounted to the truck. It is not cracked and not leaking. Attaching the power steering gearbox to the steering wheel inside the truck is our steering shaft. We'll check the steering shaft to make sure that it has no side to side play, which could indicate some damage to a U-joint or another component. Make sure that the shaft itself is not bent or broken and that if we were to turn the shaft that it has no more than 10 degrees of free play of rotational play and that also equates to two inches in a 20 inch steering wheel on the other end of the power steering gearbox we have the pitman arm the pitman arm is securely mounted and not cracked bent or broken and that pitman arm is fastened to the drag link with a castle nut that has a cotter pin. We need to make sure that we have castle nuts and cotter pins so that those don't back off and cause a failure in our steering system. On the other end of the drag link, which is not cracked, bent, or broken, we see we also have a castle nut connecting it to the steering arm. With its cotter pin in place and the steering arm is not cracked, bent, or broken. Behind the axle, attaching the two front tires together is our tie rod and tie rod ends. They both also have castle nuts with cotter keys in place and the tie rod and tie rod ends are not cracked, bent, or broken. Frame, suspension, brakes, and tires. So as we go through, we'll talk about those components in that same sequence to help us remember what it is that we need to talk about and inspect. So starting with the frame up here on the front of the truck, we look down the entire length of the frame and it is not cracked, bent, or broken. And there are no non-factory welds or repairs to the frame. For my suspension components on the front of the leaf spring and at the back, we have spring mounts, which are securely mounted to the frame and not cracked, bent, or broken. Our leaf spring is not cracked, missing, with no misaligned leaves or missing leaves. Our U-bolts that attach the leaf spring to the axle are tight, secure, with no uh, broken pieces, nothing bent or broken, and no shiny metal or metal shavings to indicate that something's loose. Our shock absorber is securely mounted top and bottom and is not cracked or broken with no oil leaking from the shock absorber. So that takes us into our brakes and we'll start with our brake hose. The brake hose is secure the fittings are tight on both ends. There's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts in the airline. No audible air leaks. We have our ABS wire, which is properly secured to the airline where it won't get snagged on anything. And there's no exposed wires or damaged insulation in our ABS wire. That leads us into our brake chamber. The brake chamber is securely mounted to the truck. We see that we have a clamp around the middle, uh, sometimes also referred to as a belly band. These could also be referred to as brake cans. All of those are proper terminology. This belly band is secure and not bent or broken. There are no audible air leaks from the brake chamber. This truck is equipped with disc brakes, so we will not see a slack adjuster or push rod as you would on S-CAM air brakes. However, we do need to check to ensure that our brakes 
our brake pads are not worn dangerously thin, that our rotor is not cracked or broken, and that there is no contamination of oil or grease or other foreign material inside our brakes. After we finish the brakes, we'll move on to the tires. A couple of acronyms we use to describe the tires. Uh, ABCs, so no abrasions, bulges, cuts on our sidewalls. ICD, inflation condition and depth on our tire. We check tire inflation at the valve stem, ensuring the valve stem has a cap and is not leaking. And we check tire pressure with a proper tire pressure gauge. Condition of the tire, we have even tread wear. We talked about the sidewalls having no abrasions, bulges, or cuts. And the minimum tread depth in every major groove on our steer tires is 4 30 seconds of an inch, which we are well above 4 30 seconds of an inch. Moving to our rims, our rims cannot be cracked, broken, or re-welded. These ones are not. Looking at our lug nuts, ensure that all our lug nuts are present and tight. Lug nuts that are loose may show space in between the washers and the rim. We may also notice rust or streaking around the lug nuts. Take care to tighten loose lug nuts with a torque wrench. After the lug nuts, we have our hub seal. Our hub seal is securely mounted with no leaks around the seal. This has an inspectable level. So in the sight glass, we want to inspect to ensure that our fluid is above the minimum and below the maximum fill lines. After we complete our wheel and tire inspection, we will go ahead and continue down the side of the truck doing our walk around, uh, starting with the driver's side mirror. We did the rest of the inspection inside. From out here, we'll make sure it's securely mounted to the side of the truck. Then we're gonna go ahead and open the driver's side door. We need to make sure that the door both opens and latches securely, closed. We have our outer and inner door seals, which are intact with no chunks out of them, no abrasions, bulges, cuts. We have a red reflector, which is the proper color. We want people to know to stop if we have to get out of this truck on the side of the road. We'll make sure that our grab handles on both sides are securely mounted. And I'll go ahead and step up as I observe the steps on the truck and make sure that they're securely mounted with no debris or tripping hazards. And I'll make sure that both the grab handles and the steps support my weight. And I'll also notice the fire extinguisher inside and inspect to make sure that it is securely mounted. It is fully charged, has a current inspection and the safety pin and lock is in place. Walking back past the driver's door, we'll look inside our side compartment and we'll inspect the same as the driver's door and also at the driver's door as well as here, we'll check to make sure that our door is not sagging on the hinges and that our seals are intact. Inside the side compartment, we have the other two pieces of our required emergency equipment. Our fire extinguisher was in the cab of the truck. Back here, we have our three retroreflective triangles and our spare fuses are in our glove box. After the side compartment, I'll inspect my diesel exhaust fluid and diesel fuel tanks. They will be inspected in the same manner. Make sure that they're securely mounted. These have steel straps with rubber insulators underneath. Make sure that the strap straps are tight and not cracked or broken, and the rubber insulators are intact with no missing pieces. Both caps are tightly secured with no leaks. And at all of my crossover and fitting lines and underneath the tanks, 
there are no fuel or diesel exhaust fluid leaks. At the back of the cab of the truck, we'll ensure that we have our DOT required white or silver reflective tape at the cab corners. Looking down the general condition of the back of the cab, we have no missing rivets or holes in the cab. My work lights are securely mounted with clean lenses, function properly, clear lenses on these lights. And then we'll move down to look in between the frame rails at the drive shaft. Our drive shaft is securely mounted with U-joints that are not broken or damaged and not loose. There's no excessive play in the drive shaft and it is not bent or twisted. Moving up, we'll look at our air and electrical line. Our electrical line is securely fastened into the socket on the truck. There's no exposed wires or damaged insulation. Our air lines are tight at the fittings. There's no abrasions, bulges, cuts, and no audible air leaks. And both the electrical and air lines are secured in a way in which there is enough slack for turns, but they won't get caught on any other components. Looking at our catwalk and side steps, they're securely mounted with no debris and no tripping hazards, not bent or broken. Our side steps, uh, the handle for our maintaining three points of contact is securely mounted and not cracked or broken. So we're gonna stay in the same process that we started at the front of the vehicle of inspecting our frame suspension, brakes and tires. We'll start with the frame of our truck. So as far forward and as far rearwards as I can see, check to make sure that there's no brakes or cracks in the frame, it's not bent and there's no non-factory welds. For our suspension, I'm gonna start at the torque arm. And that torque arm is a little hard to see, but it's directly in front of the fifth wheel and it connects the axle housing to the frame. There's one on the front and one on the back. And I'm checking to make sure it's securely mounted and not cracked, bent, or broken uh, with no worn out uh, fittings or uh, bushings on either end. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to my suspension mount. This is a, a main suspension mount here in the front which mounts to the frame and it's securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. And again, a little difficult to see, but there's what's typically referred to as a main spring, which connects to the bottom of this mount, is secured to the axle by U-bolts, and then at the rear connects to the frame with an airbag. So the airbag mounts to the top of that main spring and then mounts to the frame. So I'm checking that main spring to make sure that it's not cracked, missing or misaligned. Oftentimes those springs have multiple leaves, kind of like a leaf spring on the front of the truck or on our uh, suspension systems in general. U-bolts securely mounted tight, not cracked, bent or broken, and no shiny metal or metal shavings. At the rear, our airbag is securely mounted on the top and bottom. There's nothing that's cracked, bent, or broken in my mountings. And my airbag bellows, the rubber part of the airbag has no abrasions, bulges, cuts, with no air leaks. And in the middle, back behind the tire, is a shock absorber, and it connects to the frame and down to the axle. Securely mounted top and bottom, and the shock itself is not cracked or broken with no leaking fluid. My brakes that are tucked back in here, brake lines are secure at the fittings. The fittings are tight. There's no abrasions, bulges, or cuts in the lines, and there's no air leaking. My ABS wire is secured in place where it won't get cut or frayed or caught on anything. There's no exposed wires or damaged insulation. My brake chamber is securely mounted. The belly bands that secure the brake chamber pieces themselves are not cracked or broken and they're tight and there's no air leaking from my brake chamber. My slack adjuster and push rod 
are securely fastened with a clevis pin and cotter pin in place, not crack bent or broken with no more than one inch of free play if I were to pull on the slack adjuster with the brakes released. Again, this, uh, the rear of this truck has disc brakes. So where we can see behind the tire, those disc brakes, we make sure that our pads are not worn dangerously thin and our rotor is not cracked or broken and that neither of those components is contaminated with oil or grease. Now these do not have a user uh, inspectable slack adjustment to them, but if it were a slack adjuster system, like we talked about, it would be no more than one inch of free play. So at the back of the vehicle, we're gonna inspect our mud flaps, and we check to make sure that these are securely mounted, uh, there's no holes or tears in the mud flap, and that they cover the width of the tires on the back of the vehicle lights. I have my stop turn tail which are the red lights at the rear and that's an appropriate color securely mounted with no moisture inside the lenses clean no cracks. I also have an identification light on the license plate securely mounted no cracks no moisture with a clear lens which is appropriate and my reverse light in the same condition as the other lights with a clear lens, which is also appropriate for that as well. While I'm standing here, I'm going to check the spacing in between the truck and trailer. And what I wanna make sure of is that the frame of the trailer, which may have had an incident at one point in its life, uh, does not contact the frame of the tractor when they turn. Otherwise they can get bound up the main mechanism which helps us to avoid this is the sliding fifth wheel. And we'll talk about that a little more as we go on. Uh, initially, I'll look under, and a lot of this is performed before the truck and trailer are coupled, where you can see the kingpin and the jaw more readily. Inside the jaw opening on the fifth wheel, I can see that the locking jaws are around the shank of the kingpin fully closed. Neither the jaws nor the kingpin are cracked or broken. Now we'll go ahead and move down the side here and continue inspecting. Looking at the apron of the trailer, which is the lower mounting surface of the trailer, and our skid plate, which is also known as the fifth wheel plate which is securely mounted and not cracked or broken. There's no gap between the skid plate and the apron. It is properly greased. The skid plate is securely fastened to the platform with a pivot pin that has a locking bolt in it. And our fifth wheel release handle is in the fully locked position as well as the yoke at the front of the fifth wheel, the yoke adjuster at the front of the fifth wheel is flush against the nose of the fifth wheel. Our platform is securely mounted to the truck. We don't have any missing fasteners and it's not cracked or broken. This is a sliding fifth wheel. So we mentioned that about the clearance between the truck and trailer frame. And we make sure that the locking dogs, these teeth engage into this slide frame so that the fifth wheel is fully secured and will not unintentionally move back and forth. We also see that we have our properly equipped slide stops front and rear on the fifth wheel frame. Once we fully inspected our coupling system, we'll start with our inspection at the front of the trailer. At the front of the trailer, we have our side marker lights, both on the front right and front left. Make sure they're securely mounted. Clean lenses, not cracked, no moisture inside. They are the proper color, which is amber. Looking at the bulkhead of my trailer, there are no missing rivets or holes in the bulkhead. My air and electrical lines 
My airlines are properly connected red to red, blue to blue. There's no missing or damaged seals, no abrasions, bulges, or cuts in the airlines, and there are no leaks. My electrical line is securely engaged into the socket with no exposed wires or damaged insulation. Now we're going to go ahead and move down the side of the trailer. As we move down the side of the trailer, we're going to take care to look at our reflective tape, reflectors, as well as getting an overall condition of the side of the trailer with no missing rivets and no holes in the trailer. We should have a minimum of 50% of DOT reflective tape coverage on the side of the trailer. And that can be alternating red and white. And our reflectors at the front of the trailer should be amber in color, as well as securely mounted and intact, not cracked or broken. And reflectors at the rear should be red in color. My landing gear. Landing gear is securely mounted, not cracked, bent or broken. Our handle is in the stowed position and the landing gear is fully raised in the travel position. I have my mid light on the trailer, which is both a turn signal and four way flasher, securely mounted, no cracks, no moisture, clean lens, amber in color. As I move towards the rear of the trailer, I'm going to do the same sequence of frame, suspension, brakes, and tires. On the trailer, the biggest piece of the frame are the cross members that go from one side to the other and support the floor of the trailer. Make sure that they're securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, and no holes in the floor of the trailer where freight may fall through. On the suspension on this trailer, we have an air ride suspension. So the mount for the air ride suspension on the front, securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. The arm, the suspension arm, which goes from the mount back to the airbag, is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. And where it secures to the axle with U-bolts, the U-bolts are securely mounted and not loose with no damaged pieces, shiny metal or metal shavings. My shock absorber, securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken, not leaking. Brake hoses, secure at the fittings. No abrasions, bulges, cuts. No audible air leaks. The ABS wire is securely mounted to the brake hose. There is no exposed wires or damaged insulation in the ABS wire. And it's secured in a way that it will not get caught on other components. Our brake chambers are securely mounted. Uh, belly bands or clamps, secure, tight, not cracked, bent, or broken, no audible air leaks from the brake chamber. We have our push rod and slack adjuster, securely mounted with a clevis pin that has a cotter pin in place. No more than one inch of free play when the slack adjuster is pulled with the brakes released. My brake shoes are not worn dangerously thin, not contaminated with oil, grease or other contaminants and the brake drum not cracked broken not rewelded for our tires and wheels we have dual tires as on the tractor make sure that all four sidewalls have no abrasions bulges or cuts inflation is checked at the valve stem which has a cap and is not leaking tire pressure checked with an appropriate tire pressure gauge we have even tread wear and being dual tires, they are the same type and same size tires, which means that they're all radials or all bias plies and the same size tire. Our bud spacing in between the tires, there's no gap between the rims and no debris stuck between the tires. Minimum tread depth in every major groove is 2 30 seconds of an inch. My rims are not cracked or broken with no re-welds or weld repairs. My lug nuts are all tight and all present. No rust, no gap between the rim and the washer of the lug nut. Tightened with a torque wrench if necessary. No streaking if these were aluminum rims. My hub seal is securely mounted and not leaking. I have a visually inspected level 
and I need to make sure that that fluid is between the minimum and full lines. As I walk down the trailer, I'll check my door hanger, door tie, and make sure it's securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. ABS light is securely mounted, clean, proper color, is in fact amber because it is an ABS light. And this will only be on the driver's side of the vehicle at the rear corner. And we have marker lights at the rear, securely mounted, no cracks, no moisture, clean. And its proper color is red because it's at the rear of the trailer. On the rear of the trailer, we'll do a top to bottom inspection. We have our five marker lights up top, securely mounted, no cracks, no moisture, clean. The proper color is red. Our doors are securely closed and locked. We have the locks on the door and the pockets on the trailer. The handles are locked. Our hinges are secure and not damaged. There's no loose doors and they are completely closed and secure. No holes in the doors. We have 100% as practicable DOT reflective tape coverage on the rear of the vehicle. We did inspect the operation of our lights. We have stop turn tail light function in these lights on the rear. So we have the two on the inside function as brakes, the outsides as turns, and they all work together as markers. And so they're securely mounted, no cracks, no moisture, they are clean, and of course the proper color is red. We have an ID light for our license plate, it's securely mounted, not cracked or missing, not broken, lens is clear, and the proper color is clear, which it is. Our DOT bumper is securely mounted, not cracked, bent, or broken. It has the aforementioned 100% DOT reflective tape coverage, and our door ties on our door are securely mounted and not cracked, broken, or damaged. Now we're gonna go ahead and walk down the passenger side of the truck and catch anything that is unique to that side. And as we do so, we'll go ahead and look at our mud flaps. On both sides should be securely mounted with no holes or tears, cover the width of the tire. My chain hangers on the side of the truck, securely mounted to the truck, not cracked, missing, or damaged. The chains are securely mounted in the chain hangers. My exhaust stack, securely mounted, no holes, no damaged, loose, or missing clamps, no soot, which it could indicate an exhaust leak. The heat shield is securely mounted and not missing or damaged. And I have my ditch mirror on the side of the truck, which is securely mounted. And those are the only differences on the passenger side of the vehicle. Thank you guys for following us along on a pre-trip inspection. I hope it helps you get started on your own pre-trip inspections. Remember every truck and trailer is a little bit different. Every state has some of its own regulations as well. So check into those and we hope to see you guys here at Northern Industrial Training where we can help you get started on a path to another career. NIT, our team is your advantage.